Are you there, Paul? Yeah. Amen. Psalms 121, verses 1 to 8. Shall we read it all together? Let us read it in unison. Please begin. I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills, from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. Brother John, could you please pray for the message? Amen. Please be seated. Maganda tong Wednesday kasi wala magtatanong sa'yo after ng service. <laughs> Naubusan ako ng English. <laughs> Nabira lang. <laughs> Amen. So, a very familiar verse, uh, I mean, uh, book, here in the, in the book of Psalms. Now, this, uh, Verses actually tells us about the uh, the worshippers uh, that uh, would sing as they made their way going towards Jerusalem. Now, the re the reason, the purpose why they're doing this, uh, they're traveling, uh, going to Jerusalem, is to participate in this three annual feast. First, that is the uh, uh, feast of the Passover. Uh, commemorating the uh, uh, their departure from the land of uh, Egypt, and also the uh, the feast of the Pentecost uh, that commemorates uh, after uh, the fiftieth day after the uh, the Passover, and as well as the feast of the of the Tabernacles. Now, in this passage, now we can see here that. It is plain to see that this is what we call a pilgrim's song. A pilgrim's song or a traveler's song. Now it tells us here in these verses about the dangers throughout the journey. And we can also see in these passages the help that God provides along the way. Amen? So we can see here that the theme simply speaks about the protection that comes from God over His people. The word here that we can see, I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, amen, which made heaven and earth. Now we can also see here the word that, uh, as we go on in these verses, we can see the word keep, keepeth. No? Keepeth. Here in verse 4. Verse 3 and verse 4 and uh, we can see here the word keep, keepeth or keeps, which means watches over. It is used six times in this uh, passage here. And safety is something about which the pilgrim would be especially concerned as they journeyed on the roads through the hill country. Now, as they travel, they might stumble or they might hurt themselves. Or someone may experience uh, or will suffer sunstroke or a chilly uh, night of camping out might give somebody a, ba a bad cold as well. And there's also a possibility that while they were traveling, the robbers might be attacking them as well. 
so the message of the psalm applies to God's pilgrims today and gives us here the assurance we need as we uh, journey in this life. Remember that we're pilgrims, amen? It was the, actually uh, sung to us by Brother Jeremiah last uh, Sunday. And that's also one of our favorite songs, me and my wife. Uh, during our wedding, we played the... We asked the, uh, the, our friends from Bob Jones to play that song during our wedding. And it was such a blessing. We are pilgrims. Now, let me remind you this evening that we are pilgrims. Amen? We are travelers. We have, we have to understand that our pilgrimage started the very moment we received Jesus as our personal Lord and Savior. And it will continue until we step out of this life and into etern eternity. But again, may the glories await us when we finally get home. Remember that along the way, we have to understand, however, that there are dangers lurking around. We really cannot avoid that. Whether we try to uh, avoid it or try to escape from it, there are dangers that were already uh, placed for us along the way. Now, there are also thieves that would rob us peace, joy, and victory as well. And there are also sins that would quench the fire of God in our souls. And there were also problems that would strip us of the glory and the power of God. Again, tonight, I don't know for some of you, for some of us here right now. We've been in difficulties. We've been in difficult times. And everybody had experienced that. But may I remind you tonight that this message will encourage us. I hope this message will uh, challenge us that even in the, these difficulties or, or situation that we're facing right now, our God is always faithful to us. God's protection is always towards us. Remember that times when danger surrounded our lives and we might wonder where we can get help. But again, this psalm here is for all of us. We are aware of those problems. Might be just around the corner. Then, brothers and sisters, this psalm is for you. Let me preach the message entitled, There's No F Need. To fear. There is no need to fear. Verses 1 and 2, I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills. From whence cometh my help? My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. Point number one, God is before us. Amen. In the opening statement here, we can see here, I will lift up mine eyes. Or we can also say, I lift up my eyes. Remember that Jehovah, he created everything in this world. He created the heavens. He created the earth. And he is the God of power. And he is the God of wisdom. And he is the God of glory. And we have nothing to fear in this world. Because God is before us. Remember that the enemy, Satan, or those uh, demonic army may be at work opposing the saints. Opposing each every one of us. But again, God is in control. Remember, in the Old Testament times, those uh, people who, I would say, apostate Jews, worship other gods instead of worshiping the true, the real, and the powerful God. Let's take a look in uh, 2 Kings chapter 16, verse 4. Some of them worship other gods at shrines and also in high places. 2 Kings chapter 16, verse 4. And he sacrificed and burnt incense in the high places. Now, so these are the elevated uh, places uh, during those days that, uh, that are actually uh, elevated pieces of ground and were originally uh, dedicated to worship the idols, high places. And the hills and under every green tree. Remember that the reason why the people of Canaan were uh, judged by God 
it is because of their uh, because of those uh, uh, what they're doing remember they're sacrificing uh, children they're sacrificing uh, people and to their false gods because they said that uh, in doing that they can appease the wrath or the anger of their gods which is wrong but people of Israel during that time were also worshiping it worshiping it now Jeremiah chapter 3 verse 23 the Bible tells us truly in vain is salvation hope for from the hills and from the multitude of mountains truly the Lord our God is the salvation of Israel take note when God delivered the people of Israel and brought them into the land uh, into the wilderness they caused a lot of trouble they caused a lot of questions they're tempting God they're, they're, uh, they're questioning the power of God they said uh, oh you brought us in this place just to die yeah, they're blaming Moses and everything that's why from the age uh, is it 20 years old and below or is it 19 years old below they were the only ones who reached the promised land am I right and even Moses himself were not able to enter to the promised land because all of these things they engaged they they were in trouble when they were in the wilderness but take note but the faithful people of God look up the, above the hills to the great God who created all things if we're going to see those these things around us right now you might be surprised how God created all of these things now that's why uh, right now uh, because of uh, man's uh, intellect or uh, we uh, I'm, I would say knowledge they tried to uh, explore more in space and they found out that there's another uh, galaxy okay it's, and there are also other planets and they found out that there's another sun that is greater than the sun that we have here in our solar system but again man's knowledge are just limited compared to God's knowledge to compared to God's wisdom but again we have to understand that God created all these things now when the travelers caught sight of Jerusalem when they were traveling when they will, uh, uh, I would say, uh, about to travel going to Jerusalem, they will see the temple shining afar off. And through that, they knew that God dwelt there in His sanctuary and provided the help they needed. What I'm trying to say is that we did not see God nobody have seen God personally but let me tell you tonight that his presence is with us God is before us everything in the heavens and on the earth bears witness of the great creator who is also our heavenly father so why would we fear Psalms 33 verse 3 please Psalms 33 verse 3 Sing unto him a new song. Play skillfully with a loud. Is it Psalms 33 verse 3? Uh, 89 verses uh, 11 to 13, please. The heavens are thine. The earth also is thine. As for the world of the fullness thereof, thou hast founded them. The north and the south, thou hast created them. Tabor and Hermon shall rejoice in thy name. Thou hast a mighty arm. Strong is thy hand and high is thy right hand now we can see here that the psalmist knew that his help would not come from the hills but again the psalmist turned his attention here to the lord you know whenever we experience troubles we have to turn to god whenever we experience we experience these hard times in our lives we have to turn to god because we know that god is before us there's no help that we can find on those false gods 
The psalmist also knew that the real source of help is none other than the Almighty God. Amen? He is not referring here to, the, to a friend. He is not referring here to an ally. But again, the Creator, He is referring here to the Creator of the universe. You will really wonder how God created all of these things, right? But again, our God is powerful. He has the power to take care of all of us, amen? He created all of these things, and that's the truth. Our helper is none other than the very one who stood on the edge of nothing and made everything with the word of his power. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20. The Bible tells us, Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. He is able to help you and me. That's why in this verse, the psalmist also speaks to possible sources of harm that were common to soldiers during those days. One is, one was sunstroke. A very dangerous uh, condition where the body became overheated and shut down. And this condition is very fatal. And the other is, was uh, moon stroke. So believe that the ancients to be just as dangerous as well. Moon stroke here did not affect the body, but it affects the what? The mind. That's why in the ancient time, mental illness was thought to be caused by the moon. Okay, so this is where we get the word lunatic to refer to someone who has a mental disturbance. That's why the whole idea is this. While we are subject to the attack, we have to understand we, 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 were, uh, we will be attacked. But again, we are also subject to the attacks of our bodies and also in our minds. This is a battle, brothers and sisters in the Lord. But again, however, just as God will guard us against the attack of the enemy from the outside, He will guard us from the attack on the inside as well. Remember that God is before us. The psalmist here did not believe the superstition that the faces of the moon affected the minds and the bodies of people here. But again, we have to understand that whether by day or by night, in heat or cold, whatever the changes might be, the Father's Presence provides all that we need. We need not to be afraid of the sudden attacks that can come in the day or in the night. Because what? Our mighty God will be the one to help us. God is before us. Amen? God is before us. Next, another thing here. Verses 3 and 4. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. Point number two here. God's eyes are upon us. So the word here, move, means to sleep and slide. Uh, let's go to verse 3, please. To sleep or slide. To stagger. Or to be shaken. That is why, how easy it would be to sprain an ankle or even fall and break a bone while walking on an even rocky patch. And that is really hard if you experience that. Have you tried running on the rocky places, on rough roads? You might break your leg. But again, the Lord is concerned about our feet and our walk. Proverbs chapter 2, verse 8, please. In Proverbs chapter 2, verse 8, He keepeth the paths of judgment and preserveth the way of His saints. Very comforting, amen? Keep means to guard and protect. And it is also used six times in the book of Psalm. In, this, uh, in Psalm 121, in verses 3, 4, 5, and seven. 
and even in verse 8 as well. And it is also first used in the Bible in Genesis chapter 2 verse 15, where the Lord, where the Lord here put Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden as well. To keep it. So this means what? To guard, to protect, and to take good care of it. That's why even when we sleep, God watches us over. Amen? God watches over us because He does not go to sleep. Eh, maraming nagtatang, natutulog ba ang Diyos? Di ba? Ginawan pa ni Gary Vigian. Eh. Nagkanta, di ba? Kantahin mo ngayon, Brother Jed. Hindi. No. 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 41. And Elijah said unto Ahab, Get thee up, eat, drink, for there is a sound of abundance of rain. You know, we know the situation of uh, Elijah here, right? When he had the uh, challenge with the uh, prophets of Baal and the groups, God watches. God watched uh, his uh, servant. God did not allow that his servant uh, during those days. By the name of Elijah, ay mapahiya. God showed His power to those people there who are watching that event on that day. God is watching us. The Lord promised to keep Jacob as well, who became the father of the 12 tribes of Israel in Genesis chapter 28 verse 15, but we're not going to go there. He also protected Jacob's descendant as well. In Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 10. Let's proceed to 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 12, please. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 12. For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, and His ears are open unto their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. Amen? Amen. That's why if you know that you're a child of God, there's no need for you to fear. That's why this verse tells us that the Lord will not allow our foot to sleep. As, as L-I-P. God knows how easy it is for us to sleep into sin and also into discouragement. But again, we must remember that He is ever with us and He has promised to sustain us with His presence and as well as His power. Amen? Yes. It's really true that we can commit mistakes. Yes, because we're still in the flesh. Papasok naman dyan yung nobody's perfect ni Bada Alex. Because that is really true. That's why we need more prayer. We need God's guidance in our lives. Kasi hindi naman tayo matibay. Naging matibay na naman tayo sa biyaya ng Diyos. Without the mercy of God, wala naman tayo eh. We need to remember that the Lord has never made a house that fell, nor a foundation that crumbled. But there will be times when we feel like giving up. Am I right? And giving in. Have you experienced that? As if nothing will happen anymore. That's normal. We felt that many, many times. But we need to realize that He has lifted us out of the miry clay of this world and has established our what goings it is such a blessing a great blessing that we receive this salvation knowing that we will be with him in eternity we are constantly being reinforced and helped steady by mighty by the mighty hand of god Psalms, chapter, Psalms 40, verses 1 to 3, please. God's eyes are upon us. Psalms 40, verses 1 to 3. I waited patiently for the Lord, and He inclined unto me, and heard my cry. He brought me up also out of an horrible pit, out of the mighty clay, amen, and set my feet upon a rock, and established my goings. 
and he hath put a new song in my mouth, even praise unto our God. Many shall see it and fear and shall trust in the Lord. You know, not only does the Lord know that it, that it is easy for us to sleep, he also knows that it, that it is also easy for us to sleep. Ano ibig sabihin ko po? There are times that when we grow and weary, we want to rest and we want to give up. Hey, let me tell you tonight, it's not yet the end of the world. There are still a lot of chances that God is always providing us along the way. Hey, God is faithful. I'm always telling you that. God is faithful. And you know that as well. There are times when we let down our guard and get caught, what? Napping. But not so with the Lord. Because what? He is ever awake and ever, what? Active on our behalf. He doesn't weary, amen? He doesn't get tired and he doesn't, what? Fall asleep at the switch. That's why there's no need for us to worry because God's eyes are upon us. Amen? There's no need for you to fret. There's no need for you to lose one moment of sleep at any time because of this problem or the other. God is ever awake and is constantly on the job. What a blessing, amen? To know that we can depend on Him. Lamentations 3.23 One of my favorite verses as well. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Verse 22, please. Balikan natin, Sister Milka. It is the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because of His compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. I'm always telling that to my students. Like uh, pinapakanta sa kanila, it's a beautiful day. It's a beautiful day. Just to be alive. It's a beautiful day. Amen. What a blessing. We can wake, we still wake, uh, wake up in the morning and do our task and do our job. Why? Because it's a blessing that comes from the Lord. Our God's eyes are upon us. Another thing here, let's try to make, like, make it fast. The Lord is thy keeper, the Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. Point number three here, God's presence is beside us. Amen. So our keeper is not only on the throne looking down on us, but he is also at our side to what? To shield us from all harm. Amen? But again, this does not mean that obedient believers now never find themselves in difficulty or danger. Or they will never feel physical or emotional pain at all. The thing that God permits to happen to us in His way may hurt us, but they will not harm us. Amen? We might be hurt. But again, listen to me very carefully. Everything that is happening in our lives has a purpose. And that purpose is for us to grow spiritually. And that purpose is for us to be molded by our great and powerful God. Lahat naman nagsisimula dyan eh. Sa mababa. And God wants us to uh, become a worthy vessel in His eyes. The things that God permits us, as what I've said, in this life may hurt us, but they will not harm us. Remember, David had many experiences that brought heartache and even threatened his life. But again, the Lord enabled all of these things, those strategies, into beautiful psalms that encourages us today. 
Amen. You know what happened to the life of David? The Lord our God will always provide the shade that we need in this life. Let's take a look here in Psalm 17 verse 18, please. Psalms 17 verse 18. Yes. As eight, eight, I'm sorry. Imagine the dueling now. Okay. Keep me as the apple of the eye. Hide me under the shadow of thy wings. So the apple of the eye was used to describe something what? Precious. Okay. Easily endured and demanding protection. David wanted to be kept by God as something valuable and even fragile. Amen. We need to know from where our attacks will come. Sometimes our, uh, we find ourselves attacked in the areas where we are weak. Our enemy knows our weaknesses. But again, other times, uh, not only our weaknesses will be attacked. We might be surprised that those areas that we are strong will also be attacked by the enemy. That's why we have to be very careful. Remember Elijah? He is renowned for his courage. Right? Yet he fled from the woman Jezebel. Moses' great strength was his meekness. Everybody knows that. Right? Yet in anger, he smote the rock and was forbidden to enter into the promised land. Everybody has weaknesses. Don't say you're strong. Amen? Abraham's greatest strength was his faith in the Lord. But what happened? Yet he went into Egypt in pure unbelief. But again, the whole point is this. We will be attacked and we will never know where the attack will come from. But it never catches God off guard. Why? He is always ready to shield us and protect us from our enemies. That's a blessing. God's presence is before us. Amen? Lastly, the Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve, preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. Lastly, God's care is around us. God cares for you and me. Amen. We need not fear. We don't need fear in this life. We don't need to fear uh, life or, and death or today or tomorrow, time or eternity. For what? We are in the loving arms of a great Father in heaven. We are in the loving care of the Father. Now the Bible tells us here in verse 7, the Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. Okay, All evil means anything that could harm us. But in His grace, He turns good things we think are evil. You know what happened to Joseph, right? Joseph had to endure the slander and hatred of his brothers. 13 years of separation from his father, the false accusation of his employer's wife, and years of prison. But again, but in the end, Joseph was able to say, Genesis 5, 50 verse 20, please. Very familiar verse. Genesis 50 verse 20. But as for you, you thought evil against me, but God meant it unto good. To bring to pass as it is this way to save much people alive. Remember that? You thought evil against me, but God meant it unto good. The same thing as what Apostle Paul said in Romans chapter 8, verse 28. Let's go there, please. And we know that all things work together for good. To them that love God, 
to them who are the called according to his purpose. God's care is around us. Amen? That's why here, if we're going to take a look here in verse 8, thy going out and thy coming in. It refers to the daily activities of life. Daily activities of life. Now, in Deuteronomy chapter, Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 6, please. The Bible tells us, Blessed or blessed shalt thou be when thou comest in, and blessed, blessed shalt thou be when thou goest out. Now, the Orthodox Jews, okay, take Deuteronomy, uh, Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 9. Let's go there, please. Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 9. We're almost done. And thou shalt write them upon the post of thy house and on thy gates. In, verse, in chapter 11 verse 20. And thou shalt write them upon the door post of thine house and upon thy gates. Literally, they affix a small metal boxes here. The Jews are containing scripture portions to the right hand doorpost of the house. And what they're doing is that they touch the box reverently each time they go in and each time they go out of the house. Now these boxes are called mezuzas. Mezuzas, the word means doorpost. Now some Jewish people also attach mezuzas to the right hand doorpost. What's the purpose? The purpose is that for the individual, uh, it was placed in the doorpost of its uh, rooms in their houses. It's for them to what? To touch it, to remember it from time to time. Actually, they're writing, they're placing uh, scriptures on it inside those uh, uh, box, boxes that they are placing in. That's why what a delight is to know that as we go in and go out of the house, to and fro into the city, you have to understand that the Father is with us and He is the one that is always carrying us. It's not easy to be alone. Amen. It's not easy to experience big problems. But again, in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7. First Peter chapter 5, verse 7, please. Casting all your care upon him. For he careth for you. Our cares must be given everything to God. Just give it to him and he knows what to do. In verse 8 please. Continue in verse 8. Be sober, be vigilant because your adversary, the devil as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. All we have to do is to be careful. Because the enemy will not stop until he will not, uh, until he cannot destroy us. He will always do his best. Especially if you know that you're being used by God. Especially if you know that you can do something for the Lord's work. He will do everything just to destroy each and every one of us. But the only thing that we can be assured of, we are God's children and we are in the loving arms and care of our great Father in heaven. God's care is around us. Again, 
Remember that the God of the Bible, the God who is really there, is a God who cares for you and me. There's no need for us to fear in this life. Nagbibiro na kami kaninang tatlo sa office. Sabi ko, papalapit na yung ano, virus. Dahan-dahan na. Nasa kampong tom na, no? But again, what are we going to do? Are we going to be afraid and cry? Kung darating man dito, so be it. God knows what He's doing. There's no need for us to fear. Amen? Remember, we survived seven months. Ngayon pa kaya? Sabi ng iba, oo nga. God is faithful. There's no need for us to fear. I hope this message, a simple message, will challenge us this evening. And will enable us to be strong and be strengthened spiritually as we travel in our journey. Amen. We're pilgrims. Shall we all stand? Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, thank you, Lord God, for your challenge. Thank you so much for giving us your grace and for your love.